Hey guys, welcome back. We're gonna be doing particle sims today and probably more in the future. I've been kind of diving deeper in and thinking more like technically about everything and finding easier ways of describing it versus kind of how I was learning it the last few weeks. So we're in geometry nodes here and we're gonna be building this whole system. So it's gonna be based off of just this mesh that will hold the geometry node modifier. We go in, new system, we can cut the cut the group input, no problem, and we're gonna do a point. Nice, so with points, that can be piped through, but let's first do a simulation zone. That's gonna be the whole thing here. So let's just do five points starting off. We see them right here. And now let's just think about how everything works. So we're gonna make this whole explosion effect, but before we can make them explode, we gotta make sure that we can get them to move. So we'll do that with the set position node. So we push play, nothing's going to happen because nothing is happening on the set position. So let's have it move just a little bit. So let's just make it on the Y, let's say 0.05 and see what happens. And now it's racing off along the Y axis. Why is that happening? Because on each frame, it's then moving 0.05 or five centimeters along the Y axis. And that's why we're getting that point to move down that direction along that vector right here. Fantastic. So one other thing to quickly do is to figure out a way to add more points as it's coming in. So how would we do that? We would do a set or I guess it'd be a uh, combine or join geometry, piping it in again here. And so now on each frame, we will have a new point coming in, moving along the uh, Y moving along the Y axis. Great, now we're spawning in all these points. Why is that happening? That is happening because we have the join geometry right here, which is coming from this original position right here, which is zero, zero, which is right there. And then it's moving one chunk of five centimeters that direction. So we have all of these little divisions of new points coming in. And that's kind of the main idea of simulation nodes in general. Fantastic. Okay. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the gravity. So let's calculate that gravity right now, right? So what is gravity, right? It's going to be a vector and it's gonna be in the Z direction and it's minus 9.81. Why is it minus 9.81? Because that is what gravity is in real world, in, in real life, right? It's 9.81 meters, whoops, uh, meters, per second squared, right? So that's what actually, now let's actually just do a quick general kind of like physics crash course. So we have a uh, position, which is meters, right? We have a velocity, which is meters per second. And we have an acceleration, which is meters per second per second, right? So it's seconds squared. So to convert between these, you either do a differential, right? <laughs> a DDT to go down or the easy way is you multiply by time, right? And that will give us our positional data. Great. So we have this right here, which is an acceleration. So this is an acceleration. So we know the units are meters per second squared. Fantastic. So then to move this into a velocity, which is what this is doing for the set position, which is a meters per second, now the question is, how are we getting the seconds? It's actually not even seconds, it's actually uh, meters per frame. So actually it should be M over frame, right? That is a better way of thinking about it because we're having it update every, let's check, 24 frames. Let's set it to 30. So now we, now we know it's every you know, frame, it's moving that. So the actual velocity of this in meters per second is 30 times that, right? So we have 30 frames per second, right? So it's 30 frames times that, so times 0 0.05. So that is, you know, whatever it is, um, 1 point, point, point 0.15, whatever that it would be, you know, I think. If I can math correctly in my head. No, it's 1.5 meters, right? Wait, does that even make sense? Yeah, 1.5 meters in a second. That makes sense, because if you look at this, one second's at 30, and that's a meter and a half away. Hooray, right? That's a meter and a half, 1.5, because it's 30 times. Hopefully that wasn't too abstract, but let's kind of move it into a physical thing. 
So we make the gravity system. So we have this acceleration. So I'll, I'll be able to write some units right here. So acceleration, so this is meters per second squared, right? We're gonna have a frame node, a scene time, uh, and then that's gonna be divided by the number of frames, which is gonna be 30. So that will then give us the actual time. This is the real time right here, right? And then this can be multiplied together. And I guess we don't really need to have it be a full vector because we can just pipe it at the very end. It'll be easier to work with. So let's just do a value. Uh, minus 9.81. Great. And we can multiply this together. This guy and this guy. So now that's coming in. And then we can do a combine XYZ. So we say 0.05. And we have this as the Z value. Pipe it in. Now let's see what happens. Good. This is zooming down which makes sense because this is like a lot of gravity for what's happening, uh, like for this actual like point itself. So what's cool is we can scale it anywhere we want. So let's just scale it. So this is like real gravity right here, but we can have a scale value. I'm going to say 0.1. And then that will make it less strong. And you can see how it's dropping out and it's making new points as it's going down very quickly. Even do 0.05, and we can see it moving and falling as you would expect. And the cool thing is we're getting this beautiful parabola, which means that's an exponential function, which is what we'd expect to see. So this is a beautiful parabola we could graph if we wanted to. So it's looking great. This is working how we would want to expect. So perhaps what we should do is do a divide instead. And let's just divide by 100 and see how there we go. That's looking pretty good. I'm happy with it. Fantastic. So we have this as the gravity function. So let's just group it all into one thing. So we're going to do a control G. And then if we want to change these values, this can be there. The frame also could be the same thing. But let's just have it be there. And then the gravity value we can change too. But it's nice to use like real world units when you're doing like lar larger simulations. It helps out. So let's just call this grab great now the main next question is we're not just sending a stream of particles right we're not, we're not just sending one kind of like blast of particles we also kind of want them to kind of potentially in interact as they're kind of being spawned right so that's going to be a different way of calculating the time so as spawning new particles and new kind of explosion effects we're going to want to make sure we have an age value uh defined for this and I like to do the age values outside of the system so it's all defined cleanly. So we're going to say a store named attribute. Put it right here. We're going to do a value. Which I guess we can just put. That's fine. It's set at zero, my bad. And we call this age. So now we have an age value on these points. And we can check. Go to the points. It's all at zero. Great. That makes sense. We haven't changed it at all. That It's working exactly as we would expect. So then let's do a, a store named value. Or store named attribute, and we're gonna do age, and we're gonna do a, um, a recursive loop on this basically. So we're gonna be calling the same value and updating it. So it's a uh, named attribute, age, and what are we gonna add to it? An incremental for how much age we want, the, how much time we want to basically uh, pass for these particles. And so I will just do a math, add, whoops, math, add one. This is just an easy way of doing it. As you can see, you could do any value you wanted, but it's easier to think about it like this for one. And why are we seeing sets of five? Because back here, we're having five points at a time. And we're seeing 30, 29, whatever, zero. It's, uh, we should have zero, right, as the first one. Let's see, interesting. So this increment, like this incrementing doesn't make sense. It should actually be right here. So let's grab all this, control G, put it into this. This is age counter. And the reason why I'm thinking about this is that I'm seeing right here, which I can't draw. I, I'm seeing right here, this should be zeros and one, but it's taking 10 points and putting it all as one versus zero. So we're gonna alt click, drag it here, and then let's see. I think now it's working, it's still incrementing, and we have those five zero points. Great, it's nice to see some of the QA for this, I think. We have an age value coming in, fantastic. Now what we wanna do is take this age value and change it for the scene time. So rather than have that, we can use this rather than frame. So we're gonna do a named attribute. We're gonna do age. 
and we're going to pop that in right there. Now let's see what happens. There we go. Now it's shifting the parabola a little bit as well. So we can change the overall speed. So now basically as this point is moving, a net new like acceleration for each point is being established. So let's just change this to like 20. How does that look? That looks okay. So let's kind of talk about this. Let's maybe do 40 it's a bit, a bit slower. Let's talk about this really quick. Okay, we're seeing a lot of clumping of these points, then it's accelerating out. So what does that mean? So for each phase along the curve, the different point has a different age value for how long it's actually going to be. So the idea is there's an emitter right here, spawning new points, right? So each of those points is like age zero, right? That's there. And if I were to count all the way down, I guess I can see it inside the graph, it's 21. That's age 21, right? So with that, you would expect this point here to have higher acceleration due to gravity due to it being affected longer. And so another kind of way to think about this and remember is let's say you were to drop like a book you're holding onto like the ground, right? So like uh, like dropping the book, you have, or dropping the cube, right? And we have this kind of delta. Let's say it's like this. So we know we have some sort of distance. After one second, it moves a, like a set amount of acceleration due to gravity, because we know if it's 9.81, right? Meters per second squared times one second, we know it will have a velocity of 9.81 meters per second after that time and multiply it by a second again. And we're gonna know it's gonna be 9.81 meters displaced, right? So that's kind of how you got to think about it because you want to expect to see that acceleration happening. Cool. So we have that coming in and we have this nice kind of little blast off. Cool. Now we want to make the explosion of points. How can that happen? Really easy. All we got to do is add in a vector math. Oops. Vector math, a random value. We want to do a vector. We want it to go from, oops, minus one to one, pop it in, and let's see. Maybe it's too fast. See, it's just blasting out. And there's no longer actually a need to have this displacement right here. So we'll just say zero. Nice. So the points are flying out and they're also affected by gravity. So that's looking good. I would say we might want to have this scale a bit less. That's okay. So let me just see. It's always kind of fun seeing these uh, systems go in reverse, then it kind of explodes out. So now we have all these points exploding out. And then now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure we have a way to capture them and turn it into curves to kind of make this kind of like, you know, cool kind of curve effect. So we'll do another simulation zone just to capture this geometry as it's being created. So then we do another join geometry. And we're going to add a break right here, pipe it through, and let's see. Good. Now we have these trails coming coming out from the explosion. That's expected. It's looking good. And then what we can do is take, what's it called? We can take, ah, uh, what I could have done is add a noise back here. No, that's fine. Now we want to make sure we have the curve ideas. These work. So if we do a uh, points to curves, we're going to get this monstrosity. We don't want that. We want to have the curve ID look good. So we're going to do a capture attributes, no, a store named attribute. I'm not exactly sure why it needs to be store named attribute, not capture attribute. I tried capture attribute and it didn't work. So it must be a different way of data being stored. And we're going to store the index. It's the ID, I think. Whoops. Of what if I did actually uh, named attribute age? No, okay, I, was, I was just curious. Uh, ID curve ID uh, named attribute curve ID integer maybe it's the index there we go but let's see with this if it works I'm curious so we're getting it with that one let's double check with ID it works with ID too I think actually ID makes more sense because it should be the curve ID but even if I just did this no, who knows because if I did store named attribute or just capture attribute this is, what I'm, this is what I'm confused about. So if this is working for store name attribute, this should also work with this, right? But it doesn't. 
So that means there's some sort of data difference between the two. I'm not sure why. If you all know, I would love to hear uh, the reasoning behind it. Nice. We have that coming in. Then we can do a mesh to curves. Or it's, I guess it's a curve to mesh. And then we're going to do a curve circle. Pop this in. Lower the resolution. And then spline parameter. Mm -mm -mm. And length looking pretty cool. But let's scale it a lot. So do a float curve. Oh, this, isn't, this isn't zero to one though. Now let's see how it works. I guess what we can do is we can invert it. So if we do a map range or we know it's going from big to small. Hmm, let me think. We want to invert it. Nice. So we have this kind of simulation exploding out, which is kind of fun. And if we change the seed back here, we'll get a bit of a different explosion each time. So let's add a quick material with this, which is nice. Actually, I oh, should add capture this also as a vector. So let's do a store named attribute. This will be nice for shading. And let's just call this vector. Let's just call this uh, disp velocity. And let's do named attribute vector disp velocity. I can just copy it. Control C, Control V, pop it in. Nice. So we have a couple parameters to play around with. We have the curve ID to get unique ones if we want. We have this. So we can do a set material. Let's go to rendered view. Let's turn on ray tracing here and blow it up. Is it not doing much? You know what? Let's just do that later. Let's take an HGRI to make. Okay, so we're in here. We're gonna pull in those attributes. We're pulling in, what is it called? We're pulling in disp velocity. And we're also gonna pull in age. So let's preview those. They're not working. Shading, geometry nodes. This should be nice. This should be a nice colorful velocity. Disp. Let's just see. Ah, we lose it because it, it goes away from we do it from curves, curves to mesh, we lose we lose these things. They still have the age on it. We have the curve ID, which is what it should work. Yep. Yep, we have the curve ID. There we go. Now we have the displacement velocity. I didn't do the entire. The, the issue was I didn't do the entire simulation again. Nice. Now we have the curve velocity right there. Looking pretty cool. And then we can take that. Nice. Then I just made a quick shader and uh, I'm making the scene and I'm going to render it out. Hope you guys learned something cool about this tutorial. It was a lot of fun to do. I'll be doing some more simulation nodes for you guys in the future. Thanks so much for watching. Augury.